Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that everybody seems to like. Seriously, I'm thinking this is starting to look like some group meeting where we all have the addiction to keep purchasing cheap electronic stuff from China. At least, myself, in the past couple of months, I've received over 60 small envelopes from China. So, let's get started looking at our first item, which is the SG3525A PWM generator module. As the name implies, it uses the SG3525A integrated circuit, which is kind of a building block for switched power supplies. It has an internal voltage reference, an error amplifier, and the output stage can directly drive transistors up to 200 milliamps. But in the case of this particular module, the chip is connected only as a PWM generator, and it has these two potentiometers, that control the duty cycle and the frequency. So let's power this thing, connect it to my oscilloscope and see how the waveform looks like and what is the adjustment range. So you're probably noticing my scope is much quieter now than before. That is because of the uh, silent fan I installed inside the uh, oscilloscope. And if you haven't seen that video, there will be a link on screen to watch me uh, replace the fan. I have the module powered from my bench power supply with roughly 10 volts and we can see the waveform. Let's try adjusting these uh, pots. Okay, so the first pot seems to be controlling the duty cycle. And we can go from 0 up to 100%. We can go uh, all the way up to 100%. So that's nice. Let's check the frequency adjustment. So the lowest frequency you can adjust is uh, something around uh, 93 Hertz, which is uh, quite a low frequency. And let's see the highest frequency we can obtain. Well, this is how the signal looks like uh, at around 4.5 to 5 kilohertz. It's stable. But as soon as I go over 5 kHz, it becomes very jittery. So here is the signal at 27 kHz. Quite a lot of uh, jitter. It moves uh, back and forth, so not very usable. So I would say this, uh, this module can be used between 100 Hz and 5 kHz for various projects, uh, but anything above that you can't really uh, trust this signal because it will vary quite a lot. I will still keep the module in uh, my toolbox. Uh, whenever I need a quick way of generating a PWM signal, I think I can use this up to 5 kHz. So a link for this module will be in the description below. Our next item is these um, automatic light switches that um, switch a light on or off depending on the light conditions. So uh, let's open one of these up and see what uh, we get inside. I'm expecting to see a relay and um, a light dependent resistor because that's basically the cheapest way to uh, detect light and control something. Uh, so the way this works is uh, you go in with a line and neutral and you get a relay controlled um, uh, line output. So you can use this one for example it's uh, it's rated for 220 volts 10 amps so you could uh, use this one to control for example uh, a series of uh, LEDs hooked up in, uh, in parallel on this uh, line output. Let's take a look inside and see what kind of circuitry it employs. Uh, the cost of one of these modules is about $2.50 from eBay. Oh, and there is a 555 in here. So the circuit is uh, quite simple actually. Uh, I think in here we have a capacitive uh, dropper this will uh, drop the uh, line voltage to something more appropriate to power the relay and the 555, probably something uh, around 12 volts. 
but that also uh, makes me worry about continuous usage. I'm not sure if this relay is a normally closed or normally opened one. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> as long as the relay coil is active, this relay will be pulling um, some current through this uh, capacitive dropper which will rise the temperature and I'm not sure how well it will deal with that. But anyway, we have a capacitor dropper, a uh, bridge rectifier. Uh, what's this thing doing right here? Uh, I think this diode... Yeah, maybe if it's, uh, if it's coupled with this resistor right here, it's going to limit the current uh, to maybe something like 12 volts. So the um, voltage doesn't, uh, doesn't go over uh, what's acceptable for this circuit. And then I'm not sure which configuration they used on the 555, but uh, as expected, we do have an LDR right here. Uh, there is no pot for adjusting the uh, level, but uh, maybe they got it uh, right at the factory and it switches right when it uh, should at uh, dusk, when uh, just when the light drops enough so you need the artificial lighting. So yeah, I think these are quite uh, versatile little modules uh, that you can use to extend your uh, house or garden lighting. Uh, as you can see, we they have this uh, uh, white uh, matte uh, plastic that allows light to shine, uh, allows the light to shine through. I'm not sure how all these things will uh, survive the environment. Um, it's it's better not to mount them directly um, where they where rain can fall on them. Uh, we do see a small hole in here for ventilation and maybe to let the water out but there is no conformal coating on this uh, module. So if water does get in, it will for sure corrode and get damaged in time. Our next item is this very tiny isolated DC to DC converter. Its part number is B0505S-1W. So it's a five volt, one watt converter. You put five volts on the input and you get five volts on the output, capable of sourcing up to 200 milliamps but you're completely isolated as opposed to a classic DC to DC converter where you are referenced to a common ground point. They make these in lots of flavors, different input and output voltages, different output uh, current capabilities, and they come in different package sizes as well. There are lots of applications where isolation is important for safety reasons or for electrical noise reasons, or another application that I'm thinking is the one concerning those uh, single cell cheap lithium battery charging ICs, the TP4056. Uh, you could use, for example, three of these, uh, each with its own isolated DC to DC converter, powering the input. And on the output, you could charge a 3S battery because each of those charging ICs would be floating, so you are not shorting anything by connecting their outputs. So this could be useful in lots of ways. It depends on your application. I don't have any particular application in mind at this time, but I wanted to get one just to have it close by in case I need it. Our next item is once again a DC to DC converter. This time a step down 5 volts 2 amps output converter with USB socket and on the output. Basically designed for charging USB devices. It can take between 4.5 and 40 volts on the input, but I think it's a fixed 5 volts output. Well, not if you're putting 4.5 volts on the input, so you need to be above 5 volts on the input to get that 5 volts on the output. This looked interesting because it has this uh, onboard voltmeter and the two tactile switches. And I wanted to see what it can do because just from the eBay listing, it's not very clear. So let's hook this up to my bench supply and see what those switches do. Okay, so this switch right here. Okay, so the LED seems to be connected to the five volts output and this bottom switch seems to be turning on or off the five volts output. While this uh, upper switch right here turns off the uh, module completely. So it's kind of useless to have two switches, one for turning off the module completely and one for turning off just the five volts output. It seems to me like that's kind of a design fail. I don't know 
how that could be useful to someone. This module uses the Excel 1509-5.0, so clearly a fixed output version of this DC to DC converter. We have quite a nasty solder job on that capacitor. We have the USB data lines shorted together, but we also have pads for soldering in resistors if you'd like to make this compatible with certain products like Apple devices. So yeah, it's, it's up to you if this is going to be of any use or not. Next item, also a DC to DC converter, USB charging module. This time the specs are 7 to 28 volts input, 5 volts, 3 amps output. But I'm sure this module can't do continuous 3 amps output, maybe just for short periods of time. Let's see what is the chip they're using on this uh, device. It's the MP1584. Let me do a quick search on that one. So the MP1584, it's a high frequency controller. It can go up to 1.5 MHz. Hence, they can use a smaller inductor. And yes, it's capable of 3 amps with proper layout on the PCB. In the case of this module, it doesn't look like they follow the recommended layout from the datasheet. And the inductor seems just a bit undersized for uh, handling those high switching currents. Also, the input and output capacitors seem a bit smaller than what I'm used to seeing on well-designed DC to DC converters that can go up to 3 amps. But if you're planning on using this for 2 amps or less output current, I think it will work just fine. Maybe just a bit too much ripple on the output, but you can easily fix that by increasing the uh, output capacitance. The USB data lines seem to be shorted together. All of these uh, chip converters do that. And this seems to work for most devices. They will be happy with that and will charge at their maximum current. But I think Apple devices will not charge at maximum current with that configuration. This is a 12 volts, 0.5 amps AC to DC converter module. And if I remember correctly, I got this one because I plan to use it in an upcoming project where I need to power two 12 volt fans. And those fans will take approximately 200 milliamps each. So this power supply will cover that, but uh, at the same time, it's small and compact. The interesting thing is that this looks like a salvaged refurbished unit because we can see the uh, remains of the uh, input and uh, output connections. These are wires that have been chopped off. I didn't notice this in the eBay listing, although now I went back and checked and sure enough, it was visible in the pictures. I don't mind that considering the price I paid, which is under $2 with free shipping, but I just find it interesting that they will sell you anything out of China, even salvaged power supply modules. This particular model seems to be made by a company called Enertronics. And on a Google search, I did find they make lots of uh, power bricks. They're not just your typical one hung low factory. So I'm okay with this uh, purchase. If you're interested, there will be a link in the description below. Next item is the small module intended for converting your classic 1602 LCD module to an I2C interface. And before I tell you more about the module, let me tell you a short story. It was about six years ago when I was designing a board based around the PIC32 microcontroller. And uh, it used a 16 by 2 LCD module. I was on a very tight schedule and I just couldn't get the damn LCD parallel interface working on the PIC32MX. I still don't know what was wrong. Maybe I was doing something wrong. Maybe it was the peripheral library that I was using at that time. I don't know, but the fact is I didn't have time to waste on this kind of uh, issues. I didn't have a, a logic analyzer at that time. So I just stuck a PIC16F on that board because I, I got working code for the uh, PIC16F and the LCD. And uh, I had that PIC16F drive the LCD interface while receiving data over a serial interface from the main PIC32 microcontroller. This raised the cost of the board by approximately $1.5 if I remember correctly, but it saved me hours of debugging that stupid problem. Now, getting back to our module, it's a different approach, but for a similar purpose, converting the parallel interface of a 1602 LCD module to I2C that you can easily 
used to uh, drive with an Arduino library. The module uses the PCF8574, which is a nice squared C8 IO pin expander, so it doesn't exactly know how to drive the 1602 parallel interface, but rather provides a serial to parallel interface and a bit of code in an Arduino library takes care of the rest. They have this inline header which is compatible with the uh, standard uh, pinout on these LCDs. So you kind of piggyback the uh, module to the LCD like that and uh, you load the Arduino library and you're good to go. You even have the uh, contrast adjustment potentiometer on the module. Really a nice module overall, nice to keep around if you ever find yourself in a situation where you don't have enough pins to drive the parallel interface directly and uh, a link for this item will be in the description below. And our last item for today's video is this LED controller for WS2812 RGB LEDs. I saw this thing on Banggood and I remember I had a strip of these uh, RGB LEDs for some time and I never got around to playing with that uh, LED strip. So I picked this uh, simple LED controller from Banggood and let's see what it can do. I have prepared the LED strip with this uh, connector for the purpose of this uh, test and on the input I will be supplying 5 volts DC from my bench power supply. I have adjusted the automatic uh, exposure on the camera so you, you get a better sense of how the uh, LED color looks like. Uh, we have these uh, three tactile switches on the, uh, on the module as marked on the sill screen but the, the, it, it's not obvious but they are on the bottom side actually under the shrink tube insulator. We have two up and down uh, mode selection switches that should uh, toggle through the different modes and one key for selecting the speed. So let's uh, check these out. It's kind of hard to, to find their, their position and push them through these uh, yeah, so this is the mode selection. And we can cycle through the different modes. And this middle uh, switch is for selecting the speed. And yeah, as we can see, we have different speeds at which the, um, the controller just switches through the LEDs. And we have just lots of modes in here. Like uh, it will be very difficult to pick your favorite. What I'm curious about is to see if this thing will remember its uh, current mode after um, power on, power off. After uh, power has been removed from the module. So let's find a, a mode that is easy to remember. So, yeah, so this one that's just switching through, the, uh, through that uh, blue color. So let's remove power for a second. Let's wait for everything to discharge. And if I reapply power, yes, it, it started uh, with the same mode uh, that was selected before removing power. I guess that's a nice uh, feature if you plan to use this uh, module for, for anything in, in a project. It's nice that it remembers the last mode that it was in. That was all for today. As usual, links for all the items shown will be in the description below. So do check them out. I will see you next time.